What is that at the bottom? Leftovers. Maybe an anagram? Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 fake clues left by murderers. That he had used a needle and thread to make her eyes appear as though she might still be alive. For heaven's sake, catch me before I kill more. I cannot control myself. Handwriting on the wall and to get somebody to think somebody did this, that just shows you that is not his first rodeo. For this list, we're looking at red herrings used by killers to throw investigators off their trail. Which one did you think was the most cunning? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Mr. Cruel's Crime Scene Graffiti One of the most notorious criminals in Australia, Mr. Cruel was thought to be behind the kidnapping of 13-year-old Carmen Chan in 1991. After Chan was abducted from her home, the car in her front yard was spray-painted with messages such as Asian drug deal and payback. These messages seemed to imply gang-related retaliation. Investigators suspected that the spray paint was an intentional decoy, but they did spend time looking into non-existent gang-related activities. There is someone out there who has got information, we think, that hasn't been passed on. Tragically, the victim's body was found a year later, and Mr. Cruel was never brought to justice. Number 9. A Puppy and Lipstick on the Windshield The January 2000 disappearance of 18-year-old Zeb Quinn is notable for the evidence left in his car after he went missing. A pair of lips were drawn in lipstick on the back windshield, and there was a live puppy locked inside. The evidence comes off as completely random, but undeniably memorable. In 2017, Robert Owens, who had been one of Quinn's co-workers, was charged with his murder. However, as of writing, the case has not yet gone to trial. In case you're wondering about the puppy, it was eventually adopted by one of the investigators. Number 8. Cigarette Butts and Gum Known as the Green River Killer, Gary Ridgway was convicted of killing at least 49 women in the Seattle area in the 1980s and 1990s. This makes him among the most prolific killers in American history. But because he took careful steps to avoid suspicion, he got away with his crimes for years. One of those steps was planting cigarette butts and chewing gum from other people near the bodies of his victims. He sometimes even left notes written by others. He loved being able to talk, finally, after all these years. And in doing so, he kind of walked us down the path of, of all of his murders. In the early 2000s, Ridgway confessed to his murders to avoid the death penalty and received multiple sentences for his heinous crimes. Number 7. A Ladder and a Letter When he abducted six-year-old Suzanne Degnan, the lipstick killer left a number of fake clues to misdirect investigators. He stuck a ladder outside of Degnan's window to make it look like the abduction was the work of two people. Then, he sent a letter to Chicago Mayor Edward Kelly claiming that the abduction was related to a meatpacking dispute with her father. In 1946, William Herons was arrested for the crime and sentenced to life in prison. His confession, however, was given after authorities tortured and drugged him. A group of law students and professors at Northwestern University sought clemency for him in 2002, but it was denied. Herons maintained his innocence until dying in prison a decade later. Number 6. A Staged Car Accident A beloved teacher and coach who lived near Lincoln, Nebraska, Sandy Schnabel was found dead underneath her burning minivan. Sandy's husband, Mark, claimed the fire was the result of an accident that took place on their property. But as investigators looked more closely, that story started to fall apart. It was staged. After talking to the three children, they found that Sandy had been a victim of domestic abuse. I still remember the sounds. I remember the way she screamed. They found evidence of Sandy's blood in the home, among other places. Mark pleaded guilty to second-degree murder and received a life sentence with possibility of parole. I, too, relived that night constantly, and I regret what it has done to my children. Number 5. A Name Written in Blood When Tim Permenter killed his girlfriend Karen Pinnell in 2003, he decided to throw her ex-boyfriend under the bus. With Karen's blood, Tim wrote the name Rock on the wall in her room, referring to Rock Herpick, as if Karen had written the name to identify her killer. Further shifting blame to Rock, Tim cited relationship problems Karen had with her ex-boyfriend when interviewed. My prints were everywhere in there. I lived with Karen Pinnell for a year. Lived in every room together in that entire condominium. 
Rock, however, was spending time with his current girlfriend at the time of the murder, so that plan did not work. In 2007, Tim was convicted and received life without parole. Number 4. Ransom Note In 2012, Israel Keys abducted 18-year-old Samantha Koenig at her workplace, assaulted her and killed her the next day. Days later, he took a picture with her body, but manipulated it in such a way as to make her seem as if she were still alive. This was to make Koenig's family think that Samantha was kidnapped so Keyes could get a ransom. The family paid the $30,000 ransom, which Keyes used to travel and throw off investigators in the process. Keyes was later caught by police, but took his own life in jail before he could go on trial. You might not get exactly what you're looking for. There's not as much to choose from, in a manner of speaking, but there's also no witnesses, really. Number 3. Bathroom Hair a highly intelligent eccentric with a mathematics degree from Harvard, Ted Kaczynski, who was later identified as the Unabomber, was able to avoid capture for almost two decades. For one of his bombs, Kaczynski put in hair he found from a bus station bathroom in Missoula, Montana. It was planted to trick the FBI into thinking they had stumbled onto some DNA evidence that would identify the Unabomber. While the tactic certainly adds to the morbid fascination that people have with the Unabomber, the implications are terrifying. Imagine, one trip to the bathroom and someone could try to frame you for murder using the DNA you left behind. Number 2. Messages in Blood Tell me in a sentence who you are. Nobody. In the summer of 1969, the now infamous Manson family embarked on a bloody murder spree. It began with the cult's murder of Gary Hinman, allegedly over a drug deal. On August the 8th, 1969, Manson launched a series of crimes he hoped would be blamed on the black community. In order to deflect blame, they drew a Black Panther symbol and wrote political piggy in blood on a wall. When cult member Bobby Beausoleil was arrested anyway, the cult killed actress Sharon Tate and her four guests, as well as supermarket executive Lino LaBianca and his wife Rosemary. Manson hoped that bloody messages left at the crimes would tie the murders back to Hinman's, undermining suspicion of Beausoleil, and triggering an apocalyptic race war he dubbed Helter Skelter. I said, if you're going to do something, leave something witchy. Just like I would tell you, if you're going to do something, do it well. By the end of the year, however, police had seen through the misdirection and arrested the true perpetrators. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Zodiac Cipher One of the ways the Zodiac Killer toyed with the public was by sending ciphers that were expected to be decoded. And you got symbols from at least seven different sources. Greek, Morse code, maybe semaphore. It took 51 years for one of the ciphers, which had 340 characters to be cracked, thanks to three experts and the use of a supercomputer. As if all that work weren't bad enough, there was hardly any payoff. The method that he was able to use to create that, uh, that cipher um, may help uh, track down who he is. The message was mainly about how the Zodiac Killer planned to enslave his victims in the afterlife. Of the four ciphers the Zodiac Killer sent out, two of them remain unsolved. Here's hoping that one of those two can finally reveal the identity of the serial killer. The best part of it is that when I die, I will be reborn in paradise. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.